Should you always be trying to chase pain-free training? Hey everybody, Dr. Michael Mash here. Welcome to episode four of Whiteboard Wednesday. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you're on YouTube, hit the alert notification. Today, I wanna to talk about whether you should always be trying to chase pain-free training. And if you would have asked me this four or five years ago, I would have said yes, because that seemed to be the buzz at the time. You know, pain-free training, everything should be pain-free. But as I've learned more and worked with more people, I've come to realize that pain-free may not always necessarily be the goal. Why? Because pain is, how much time do you have really? Pain is such a complex uh, issue that we really want to start to focus on getting away from the idea that things need to be pain-free and more towards the idea that things in training should be tolerable, all right? Especially when it comes down to the rehab process, right? Think about it this way. If you're always trying to chase pain-free training in the rehab process, you may end up underdosing things because what we know is the rehab process doesn't need to be pain-free. What you should be shooting for is tolerable. So that's where we get into the concept of irritable versus stable symptoms. So think about it this way. When you're rehabbing, let's say a specific barbell lift, let's say you're rehabbing the bench press. It doesn't necessarily need to be pain-free, but if we look at it on a scale, on a pain scale from zero to 10, 10 being the worst pain imaginable, zero obviously being no pain, we want to make sure that we're not going over that three to four out of 10 pain range and that you're not experiencing a flare-up 24 hours after. So if you have a flare-up 24 hours after, we would consider that dose, or what you did the day before, an irritable dose, and you may want to go back to the drawing board and maybe modify something about the lift, or maybe reduce the dosage and in the form of either intensity or volume, so that you don't have a flare-up 24 hours after. So it doesn't necessarily need to be pain-free, but it should be tolerable. And tolerable is defined as three to four out of 10 during and not a flare up 24 hours after. So that sort of gets us into, we can't just always categorize people in this dichotomous way, but what we can talk about is the difference between people that are avoiders versus persisters. Now I want you to look at this on a sliding scale, all right? And think about it this way. You can categorize people based on this sliding scale. They're obviously not gonna fit in specifically one or the other, but again, it's a spectrum. Avoiders tend to, the second they feel any kind of pain or discomfort, they shut it down. They may have this idea or may have been taught that pain equals damage, and I'm afraid to do any damage, so I'm gonna shut it down. So those would be the avoiding side of the spectrum. On the other side of the spectrum, you're gonna have your persisters. These are people that tend to just ignore all symptoms and just grin and bear it and push through as much pain as they possibly can. So as you can see, it's a sliding scale. The job as the clinician is to bring the persisters back to the middle and maybe tell them, hey, look, if this persist thing, if this would have been working, it would have worked by now and you wouldn't still be having all of these, uh, these symptoms. On the other hand, the avoiders, the ones that have been not poking into any pain whatsoever, you may want to encourage them, hey, look, sometimes in order to promote a tissue adaptation, we need to push the load in the form of either intensity or volume a bit, and it may be up into that three or four out of 10 pain range, but it should be tolerable. So when it really comes down to it, the whole goal would be to bring the avoiders, the people that are completely avoiding pain a little bit more and trying to push them a bit, whereas sort of you wanna rein in your persisters. So, and this sort of plays into this whole, should you always train pain free? If you want me to give you a blanket answer, the answer would be no. If the whole goal was always pain-free training, you can you might end up under dosing, right? Because this whole notion of pain-free training promotes the idea that pain equals damage and you should never train through damage because you might wreck yourself, right? We know that's no longer the case. So don't always try and chase pain-free training. We want to chase tolerable training. Pain is a part of everyday life. 
It is something that we should not be trying to eradicate. It happens, right? And it happens even when the dosage and the exercise selection is perfect. So instead of trying to completely rid it, we want to try and make sure our workouts are tolerable and that after the workouts, the pain is not interfering with our ability to enjoy our everyday activities and making sure that the pain is not preventing us from hanging out or with our friends. So should the goal always be pain-free training? No, but it should be tolerable. Your symptoms should be subsiding. You should be returning to baseline after 24 hours and you should it shouldn't be negatively impacting your social life. Thanks for attending episode four of Whiteboard Wednesday.